His amazing grace. Come on, you want to thank God for His amazing grace. Look at somebody and say, if it hadn't been for the grace of our God, don't know where I'd be. But I'm here tonight in my right mind because of the grace of amazing God. Will you help me just one more time? Lift your voice. Give God praise. Put your hands together. Bless his name. For God's amazing grace. God's amazing grace. We honor God tonight for the privilege to stand and declare his word yet another time. Uh, my task tonight is uh, to talk to you. Uh, to lecture tonight, and so I pray. In fact, I have printed a sheet tonight to kind of keep me in my lane, make sure I lecture tonight. I want to look at this text. Help me praise God for you. I pass it this great house, Dr. Mills. Uh, certainly honor God uh, for Dr. Mills and this invitation, and to the guest revivalist, uh, Dr. Mitchell, who's uh, going to preach later. I want you to help me praise God for Dr. Mitchell. All of the other ministers of the gospel are here, pastors who are here. We thank God for you. Uh, as I hasten to this text, thank God for uh, membership of the New Covenant Baptist Church. I see you ushering and you're singing tonight. Y'all help me praise God for the covenant. <laughs> Simply thank you for coming tonight. James chapter 2, second chapter of James. Three verses beginning with verse number 14. I am amazed, uh, simply amazed at uh, the fact that God would call a revival together such as this and have us focus in on that which is important to the body of Christ. It's not, not just important to a missions ministry, uh, but we all are called to do the work of missions, to all, all are called to, to go and to do. Text says, James, James says, James chapter 2, his verse 14, uh, from the New King James Version of the text, it simply says, What does it profit, my brethren? If someone says he has faith, but does not have works, can faith save him? Simply, can faith alone save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. That's verse number 26. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I simply want to declare tonight that which ought to be all of our declaration. I am praying that at the end of this revival time, at the end of our time together, uh, these three nights, uh, that this will be everyone's declaration. Uh, that simply is, I must serve daily bread. thought I was preaching, I was going to say, look at your neighbor and tell them I must serve daily bread. I'm, I'm going to do my best tonight. I want you to know uh, that this is the declaration that God calls all of us to have because the truth of the matter is you and I, we can be a person of faith and not be willing to serve daily bread. Daily bread is so important that the Lord Jesus himself speaks about daily bread in Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 11. In fact, you know it is the Lord's prayer right there in the middle of the prayer. Uh, the Lord instructs us to pray and give us this day our daily bread. Daily bread was so important that Jesus himself, the Lord himself, invites us uh, to pray for daily bread. Because when we think about daily bread, of course, it uh, lets us know that our God is faithful. Somebody say faithful. faithful. And out of his faithfulness and out of the heart of who God is, God wants to meet our daily needs. In fact, I'm reminded of Elijah's testimony in 
1 Kings chapter 17 when there was a drought going on, but the man of God was hid by a brook called Cherith. And God used a raven, and every morning and every evening, God provided for this man of God exactly what he needed. And I just want to simply suggest tonight that if God could use a dirty bird, God certainly can use you and I to provide daily bread. That's what I want to suggest tonight, uh, that God, God desires to use us in such a way that we are the blessing that someone else needs, that God will use us to provide daily bread. The truth is, you and I can be a person of faith and not be willing to serve daily bread. Serving daily bread, it is the work that validates our faith. It is uh, that which the way it is the way in which we express our faith. It is our service to the Savior. It is the way we serve the God identified saints and sinners. Somebody say and sinners. It's the way that God 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 uses us to serve those who He identifies for us. In fact, Matthew calls the persons like that the least of these talking about those who are hungry those who are thirsty those who are naked those who are sick and even in prison and I simply tonight want to share with us that you and I must be willing to serve daily bread uh, in order for us to grasp this concept we must first understand that we must serve everybody say serve 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 that means you and I must be servants we must give up our rights to act on our own we must voluntarily become slaves to Jesus. Uh, we must serve. In fact, Jesus himself says, I did not come to be served, but I come to serve. And how in the world can we suggest or expect Jesus to be the one who will serve, and yet we think we're too high and mighty to serve someone else? You ought to say, make the declaration for yourself, I must serve daily bread. I'm simply trying to say tonight that you and I can't settle for going nowhere, doing nothing, and helping no one. You and I can't settle for having religious jargon with no action to back it up. You and I can't settle for having lofty talk but lazy work. You and I can't settle for having churchy actions without a Christ-like attitude. You and I, we can't settle for having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Tonight, I believe that God wants to set some things straight this week and God wants us to understand that we must serve daily bread. Let's be clear. I'm trying to get through this quickly. We must be clear, brothers and sisters, that daily bread is not simply about feeding food to folk. Uh, it's, it's more than us giving a sandwich to somebody. You and I must understand that daily bread goes a little deeper than that. Please, please do not simplify uh, this matter and this conversation thinking that it's only about food. I'm talking about the daily necessities of life. I'm talking about what Jesus said we should pray for in Matthew chapter 6 verse 11. Uh, in, in that single one Greek word that he uses for daily bread right there it is clear that he's talking about God's provision for every day he is talking about that which is unique to fit the demands for that which I need to be sustained it's clear that the Lord is talking about that which folk need it's called daily bread somebody say daily bread it's talking let's look at it daily means ongoing continual with frequency with regularity consistency bread on the other hand it signifies substance in quality provision that which fulfills a need so let's put it together can we uh, that means that when it comes together daily bread simply is perpetual provision it is ongoing substance it is regular resources it is a continual expression of love God wants us to serve daily bread because that symbolizes the things that God wants to use us to help somebody else with. Y'all still looking at me like you don't know what daily bread is, so can I tell you that daily bread is simply some of the luxuries that we enjoy day in and day out. And sadly, we take those things for granted. I'm talking about daily bread being the clothes we wear. That's daily bread. Daily bread are the shoes that are on your feet. Daily bread is the safe house that you live in. Daily bread is fresh, clean water that 
we drink day by day. Now don't look at me like everybody has clean water to drink because we could travel to Flint, Michigan right now and find some folk who are in need of clean water to drink. Y'all still looking at me, let me go deeper. Daily bread is the toothpaste and the toothbrush and the toilet paper that you use. Daily bread is the underwear that you have on, the t-shirt that you take for granted. Daily bread is the soap and the shampoo and the lotion that makes you look good on the outside. Daily bread is the comb and the brush and the place to take a shower. Daily bread is the one dollar that's in your pocket that you might go and get a McChicken sandwich with uh, that you will halfway eat. Daily bread are the two dollars that somebody needs to catch a bus somewhere. Daily bread is the three dollars that will be one night stay in somebody's shelter. I'm not preaching, just talking y'all. That's what daily bread is. And God says he wants to use all of us. Look at somebody say all of us. All. I'm trying to slow down. I don't want to preach. I'm lecturing y'all. God wants to use all of us to provide daily bread. Daily bread, that's the things that God wants to use us to serve to somebody else. So my declaration tonight is I must serve daily bread. I, I've got to do it. Now let me be clear, brothers and sisters, before we leave this place thinking that we are the ones to, pre to prepare the daily bread or even create the daily bread. No, God creates daily bread. God prepares daily bread. He just wants us to serve the daily bread. That's God's job is to do the preparing. Our job is to do the serving. So the, we find ourselves in this text. I've got 10 minutes left. And you ought to see in the text right there in the middle of the second chapter of James. During this discourse on the connection between faith and works. That uh, James, he inserts a compelling and yet convicting hypothetical. He says, I want to know what if. Somebody say what if. But what if a brother or a sister comes to you and they are naked, they have nothing to eat? Is it going to do for you just to smile at them and give them the Holy Ghost talk that we like to give and say, go ahead, be filled in the name of Jesus and think that they're going to be all right? No, the, the text says we do no good unless we provide them, serve them daily bread. Tell somebody, I've got to do it. I've got to serve the daily bread. Here's three things. I'm going to tell you in my last minutes and tell you that we ought to go somewhere. Tell somebody go somewhere. The text says, if, if you meet someone in need, I want to suggest today that in this propositional statement, if you meet someone, uh, that the Lord is not saying, wait around for somebody to come by you. Uh, you and I can't afford to sit where we are and wait for someone in need to stop by, knock on our door, and ask for what they need. We've got to go somewhere. Tell somebody, go somewhere. you got to go somewhere. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 says, go. you got to go. We've got to go where the need is. Some of us will go to places like Haiti and Africa and Jamaica. Some of us will go to those places but others of us will just go right across the street to do what needs to be done. But wherever you do, you ought to go somewhere. Look at somebody say go somewhere. Go, go, go somewhere. This is Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church, isn't it? I, I don't believe it's Mount Sinai Stationary Baptist Church. So uh, That means you and I ought to go somewhere. Say, say, say go somewhere. You can go across the street and find somebody who needs you to serve them daily bread. We, we've got to go somewhere. You can go from the White House to the crack house to the church house, any house you want to stop by. You'll find somebody who needs for you to serve them the daily bread. You, we, you and I must go. Go to the prisons. Go to the jails. Look at somebody say go. you got to go. We, we've got to go to the juvenile detention centers. We must go to the shelters. We must go on the streets. Got to go to other churches and declare we've got to go to the family reunion and to the family debtors where folk might not know Jesus but I'm going anyhow so that I can tell them about a God who's able to do anything but fail. Look at somebody and say go. You, you got to go. Got to go all over this nation. Go to Flint, Michigan. Go to my hometown, Baltimore, Maryland. Go to Orlando, Florida. You got to go. Go all over Little Egypt. That's what y'all call this, right? Look, you got to go everywhere. You got to go down Pine Hills and Mercy Drive. Look at somebody and say, go, go to the schools, go to Jones High School, go to Memorial Middle School, go to Ivy Lane Elementary School, go up and down Winter Garden Road. Y'all looking at me, but I just simply came to tell somebody that you want to go, go somewhere, and when you go 
somewhere, you ought to do something. Look at somebody and say, do something, because there's nothing that's more sad than going somewhere and then doing nothing. You got to get there and do something. Look at your neighbor and say, do something. Do You got to do something. You and I can't solely expect it. You and I must be able to participate. We must do something. Don't, don't do like the text says. This person in the text did. They, they did nothing. And some of y'all saying, yes, they did. They gave them a word. They said, go in the name of Jesus. And I'm trying to tell you, I'm glad you feel what the Holy Ghost said. You got a word on the inside of you. But there are some folk who need a word and some food. Y'all won't help me in here. There are some folk who need a word and a place to stay. So when you get there, you must do something. Tell somebody do something. You, you don't know what to do. Go make a sandwich. Do something. I, I remember the time my mama would look at me and say, why are you? still standing there. You want to just do something. You got she had that look on her face like I'm looking at you now. Just do something. You ought to go do something. Go pour some water. Go hand out some clothes. Go give away some shoes. Look at somebody and say do something. You got to do something. Go hand over some supplies. Go give somebody some money. Y'all looking at me. Look at somebody else and say do something. Do something. Go shake a hand. Go offer a prayer. Go do something. Go express the love of God. Go offer a smile. Go do something. God God calls us to do something, to do something that matters, to do something that will extend us, to do something that will be a sacrifice, to do something that will make an impact, to do something that will meet a need, to do something that will indicate your connection with God's word and God's will and God's way. Look at somebody and say, do something, do, do something. That's right. You and I must go somewhere. And when we go somewhere, we must do something and then we must help somebody. Look at your neighbor say help somebody Just like the good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10 We must learn to help somebody Because the text indicates brothers and sisters That when they talk about the person who was there Who was speaking to not just anybody But talking to the brother or sister When someone comes to you When a brother or a sister comes to you And all I'm trying to say is that you and I Have more brothers and sisters than we really realize And we've got to stop looking at somebody as they are the other folk and look at them as the one who God has called us to help. Uh, God says help somebody help somebody like the family over in Haiti who rejoices over a small bag of rice and beans. We've got to go help somebody like the kids in the orphanages in Haiti who says I'm blessed just to have one US dollar in my hand you ought to go help somebody like the young folk we went and saw in Jamaica who said thank you for this toothbrush because now I don't have to share a toothbrush with my mama. Thank you for what you gave me. We ought to go help somebody. Help somebody like the young girl in Jamaica who received a pair of undergarments and said I'm so happy. Now I have two pairs. See y'all miss that because you got a whole drawer full of underclothes. But this young lady over in Jamaica said I got two pairs now. You ought to go help somebody. Look at your neighbor say go somewhere and do something and help somebody. God says you and I ought to serve daily bread. We've got to help somebody and help somebody who can't return the favor. Are y'all hearing me today? Don't just help somebody that when you scratch their back, they'll turn around and scratch your back back. No, you've got to help somebody who can't do anything in return for you. Jesus teaches us this in Luke chapter 14. Can I read it to you real quick? Luke chapter 14, around verse 12, 13, and 14. Jesus says, Then he also said to him, Who invited, uh, When you give a dinner or a supper, Do not ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, Nor rich neighbors, Lest they also invite you back. Uh, and uh, you be repaid but when you give a feast go and invite the poor y'all hear that? Uh, invite the maim invite the lame invite the blind and you will be blessed I wish I was preaching I feel like preaching y'all look at somebody and say uh, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you shall be repaid uh, in the resurrection of the just I'm going to my seat real quick y'all but look at your neighbor and say help somebody help somebody because there will always be someone who needs your help look at your neighbor say help somebody there are students in the school system who need your help there are detainees in the detention center that needs your help there are prisoners in the jail that need your help there are sick folk in the hospital that need your help help me preach real quick y'all
the suicidal people sitting in the sanctuary right now, up in here, up in here, that need your help, that are hungry folk that need your help, homeless folk that need your help, and before you go down that road, there are homeless folk in the streets, in the hotels, in their cars, who need your help, and all God wants us to do is to go somewhere, do something, and help somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to help somebody. Because your church talk, I'm finished, your church talk won't do. God says that we got to go somewhere. So the question is, I'm finished. Who are you going to help? What are you going to do? Where are you going to go? Because if you and I will be committed to being a person of faith, we must commit to serving daily bread. God bless you.